It's Tuesday, October 4th, 2022, and this is Talk Commerce. Big commerce is open SaaS, and open means building a community. Heather Barr and Brent talk about the growing big commerce community and how to get involved. Heather walks us through how easy it is to get involved and to be introduced to the big commerce community. There's a lot of first things at big commerce, and the community is strong and growing. Heather tells us why this big commerce community is unique in the commerce space and especially in the SaaS space. So many things in the works, this is a perfect time to get involved. Will there be a big commerce event in Austin? SaaS by SaaS West? Who knows? Look for the free joke during the podcast. Oh, sorry, I realized I was making this commercial. I'm just snacking on some freeze-dried Skittles from the Bulk Candy Store. The Bulk Candy Store is a family-run shop nestled in sunny South Florida, where their customers are their close friends. The Bulk Candy Store has been helping to celebrate your most memorable events with sweets and snacks since 1992. Every day is a celebration, and sharing those moments with people is priceless. Whether you're ringing in the new year or just gathering to make merry, the Bulk Candy Store has all the sweet treats you need to make the special occasions of your life exceptional. Go to BulkCandyStore.com today and order your next sweet treat. My name is Brent Peterson and I'm your host. Please remember to subscribe wherever you download your podcasts. And now, Talk Commerce. Welcome to Talk Commerce. Today I have Heather Barr. Heather is the community developer manager or the developer community manager with Big Commerce. Heather, go ahead, introduce yourself, do a much better job than I did. <laughs> Tell us your day to day role and maybe one of your passions in life. Yeah, absolutely. So great to be here. Thank you so much, Brent. Like you mentioned, I am the developer community manager at Big Commerce. So I basically just do the day to day admin type things with our developer community spaces. The most poppin' is our Slack. In addition to that, I build out some programs and host events and things things like that. And now that we have a really awesome, solid developer relations team, I work very closely with them to do exactly that and just improve the developer experience or try our hardest to do that at the commerce. And one of my greatest passions is it actually is somewhat of a newer passion. Maybe in the past like year or two, I have built out a like a van, like a camper van out of a old like Amazon truck. And so I really love traveling around in that and just doing some camping, glamping, I guess you could call it. But yeah. <laughs> All right, so now I'm super jealous, and maybe yeah, after the interview we'll have to talk about camper vans because I had the yes. same idea <laughs> out, of, out of an old, uh, like a sprinter van or something. Yeah, I love that concept, and it gives you an opportunity to get out on the road and see things, so that's yeah. super cool. Yes. Okay, so before we start the really fun interview, we're going to do the free joke project, and I did prep you on this, so it's uh, I'm going <laughs> to just tell you the joke, and then... The goal okay. is this a free joke or is this one we could charge? So I have a very, okay. I have a quick and simple one today. Ready? All right, I'm ready. To the guy who invented zero, thanks for nothing. I like that one. That one is definitely charge worthy. It's simple, it's to the point, and it, it definitely cracked a smile. All right, good. Do you want to try <laughs> one more? Or are we good? I like that one, but if you have another, I can handle another. All right, I, I got an easy one. Okay. What do scholars eat when they're hungry? Academia nuts. <laughs> okay, that, I really like that one. <laughs> Good. That one I would pay for. <laughs> Thanks for playing along. I, I need a little jingle for that. I, oh, definitely. Um, I'll think about a jingle later on. All right, so let's dive into the big commerce community. I'm excited about the big commerce community because I was just, I was at the Partner Summit, and it yes. has this sort of open source vibe that some of the other communities have. Tell us how, what you're doing in the community and how you're helping the community grow. And tell us a little bit about the Slack channel and yeah, go for so it. So we have a Slack workspace and we are working on getting it to a point where we can just like fully blast it. But everyone listening to 
podcast, definitely reach out and get involved. I can have a link for Brett that he can share so you can join us there. But yeah, that's our most poppin' space right now. But we have other things going on in the community as well. The Slack is just more of the, I guess, a real-time peer-to-peer resource that we have available for developers and partners who are building solutions on the platform. And so in there, we host some series events like AMAs. We're asking anything events with some of our product members. So basically, if people in the community have some interest in meeting with like someone from product or a team from product like mobile or headless or page builder or building widgets or whatever it is, then basically we get those requests and then we just host like a small sort of intimate meeting in Slack in one of our like dedicated channels where you can just ask product anything about that topic. So those are really cool. And we do those and we do about two to three or four possibly every year. And we can increase that if we get a little bit more resources or help. But yes, so that's one of the main things I guess going on in like in the Slack. We also have some other types of events depending on like what you as a partner or developer are interested in. Let's say you want to, I guess, market or just promote your service to merchants and just have a space where you can talk openly about it and just have a real conversation about what you're solving for and what are the, maybe the plans to come and so forth. We have a series event like that as well. We do it two to three times a year as well. And that is in our customer facing community, but to sign up, it's through our developer community. And then through my partnership with our developer relations team, Katie and Steven and Constance, which I know you already met with Katie, we are doing some bigger events. So those are really awesome. So we did our first hackathon, which was really great. We plan to do many more. And then also this past year, we actually had our first community-led event too, which I know is huge, like in the space where you're from, but it's new here at BigCommerce. And I really hope to see like more of these types of events and other types of content, just like organically forming, but that was with Space 48. So they held a, like a paneled type of uh, virtual event where they basically were able to grab some partners from the community and just share tips and all types of stuff and just like things that they've learned like while developing on the platform. And it was completely community led and it just blew my mind. It was so awesome. And yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of firsts going on right now in our developer community. And I think that is what's really exciting is because we've been building it for a couple of years now. Or, um, yeah, so we've been building it for a couple of years now. And it's just like we're finally getting to a point where we're able to see these types of opportunities and like actually really go forward with these types of opportunities ourselves, like internally. So I would say the big thing about getting involved in our developer community right now is that there's a lot of firsts. So if you have any ideas or if you just want to be a part of the beginning, like it definitely has that type of vibe where it's like we're, we're getting that momentum. And so we have a lot of stuff in the works and we have we just have a lot that we all want to do as well. So it's a really good time to participate. Yeah, and I can say that we worked with Space48 on that first event in for another community in Austin in 2016 with Shipper HQ and Karen nice. Baker. That was organized, and we ran that until 2019. So it was it's a great place, and I'm going to propose that we we do a big the big DevX or whatever we call it yes. event in in Austin next year. Maybe we should call it Big Commerce by we have to think of a name to mimic off of South by Southwest, right? Ooh. Okay. Commerce by SAS or something like SAS, <laughs> SAS by SAS. Yes, we'll have to, oh we'll my have to include you in the party planning committee. <laughs> SAS <laughs> by SAS. We're thinking of some next year big developer things. And we're starting to start conversations about those now and seeing who we need to talk to make these things happen. Yeah. And there's a great event space that we've always, we've done it in twice. It's called Trinity Hall. It's on Trinity and I don't know. Anyways, it's in downtown Austin. But yeah. All right. So if I'm a new developer and I want to get involved in the developer community and I maybe I want to build an app, is there a, okay. is there like a place that, so I'll join the Slack channel and then is there a way for me to easily get started? To walk me through pretending that I'm a developer and I really would like to participate in the big commerce community. Yeah, absolutely. We have a lot of different spaces where developers can try to reach out or get involved with others. But I would say Slack is definitely the most popular, but it's not the most visible. 
So that is something that we are working on now as far as like how to get that to be a more visible place. And whenever we are able to get it to be a more visible place, that's the other side to it. So depending on where this app developer came to us or found us, whether that's Twitter or our help center forum or Stack Overflow or whatever it is, we would be reaching out. So that's what my team does. And we reach out. And then also Katie, she's really great with our Twitter. So yeah, we basically would get in contact, find out what you're trying to do. And then if we feel that you're an app developer, so we would obviously send you the link to get involved with our Slack community. And then there you can connect with other developers, other partners that have been building apps forever. And so you have those resources, but also build that relationship with you and then really provide some resources that help you individually, whether that's like linking the correct docs to you or different blogs. And right now, actually, our developer relations team is working on a like an app series or they will be starting soon because that is a gap right now to the partners and developers or just like people that are new to building solutions on the platform, having that hard time getting an app off the ground, I guess you could say. And so that is something that we are actively working on right now. But I would say the best or I like the vibe right now in the community on how we can help is just really getting to know you one-on-one -on -one and providing those resources to you one-on-one. -on -one. So it is more of a, hey, let's connect, let's help each other, like that type of vibe. As we continue to grow, we can scale and can provide more resources and pump out more resources ourselves. That's when, you know, we can provide those links and, you know, that content. Yeah, and there there are regular public facing document doc. There's a dev doc series that you have that's public, so I could start there and then also get in contact with you to join the community and get going. How about I know that you mentioned having your first hackathon. What are the plans around maybe having an in person hackathon? There are plans to having an internal hackathon. Yeah, that was our first one, and it was a blast, and it got a lot of people excited. So that was like external people as well as like big commerce employees as well. Everyone was just so pumped about the hackathon. And with that comes more, I guess you could say. So teams approaching us saying, ooh, like we want to, what about our thing? What about our thing? And they also third party app companies as well saying, ooh. And so there is a lot of interest, which is really good for us because we get to plan out in advance. Let's do this hackathon virtually, this one hybrid, this one in person or whatever it is. And we can plan all of those out. And maybe we can make all of them hybrid. Maybe we can try different locations. There are a lot of ideas, basically just a lot of ideas on what we want to do as far as getting one planned. We're not sure which one we're going to do next. Actually, we do have one next, but we can't talk about it right now. And it that one may be virtually, but mid-year or like maybe late in the year, I think we're going to try to do something a lot bigger. And that would definitely be a hybrid or in-person. And then potentially doing some like small, like little dev challenges virtually, or even like doing some small pop-ups in person would be really cool too. Yeah. I think we usually capped hackathons at 80 or a hundred people just because mm -hmm. of the amount of people that you could fit in a room. And we yeah. always did it after an event and it was always really fun. How about including people other than developers like project managers and solution architects? Do you see a space for them in the community? I definitely do. And we have some of those, those types of roles or people with those roles in our developer community Slack right now. And so basically our developer community Slack is like a umbrella acceptance, I guess you could say. If you sit under the technical umbrella at all, if you work with your developers, if you're a CTO or a solutions architect or something like that, then you definitely are what we're trying to have in this space. But for these events, I definitely see a benefit in having them. I think project management especially would be excellent to have because that's what they do in their job and they really help the development life cycle. And so I think there's a huge benefit of having like one project manager like per team. I think that would be a really nice way to divide it up and then just really have a lot of success in the hackathons and from the submissions and on a team level. Yeah, I, there there are some other events that happen in other communities that are, are longer. Maybe they're a weekend event, maybe a Friday night through Sunday event. Then you where you come together, build your ideas that you want to do. Then you put a team together, and then that team goes and tries to get as much done as they can by by Sunday night. So that comps it would include a project manager, a, some kind of a architect, maybe some. It, it, there's a lot more room for roles there. Yeah. And then some people that aren't so technical wouldn't feel left out and they can participate in the event and have yeah. a lot of fun. 
Yeah, I think the more diverse the team can be, the more successful it can be, honestly. Where do you see the big commerce community going in the next year or two? In the next year or two, I see us doing so many more events, really, honestly. I see that being our, I guess, our biggest opportunity is doing hackathons, doing smaller, like, developer challenges, and then also getting ideas from our community as well. There's something that they, our members really want to push out or just want to be involved or really want us to push out or just see as an opportunity. We are all ears for that. Like I said earlier, like we're just in a time of a lot of firsts. And so we are so open to making this, the, the, this community, um, the best it can be for our members. We really want to hear from our members. We really want to just give them what they want. And I definitely see events being a huge thing for us this upcoming year. And that's a whole different type of just a broad range of types of events that I see coming. Are there any plans around seeding other sort of community leaders to build communities in other countries and other areas? Yeah, so that would be that would be incredible. I think so there's a lot of like really mature communities and then also just some really engaged like younger communities that are doing this right now and that have been doing it for years and that's something that I would personally love to see. Like for the hackathon for example, we had people that were it was a worldwide type of event and it was really cool to see because we only have 2 weeks to really announce it. But it was like split between many continents. So it was, it would be really nice to just have, I guess, like focus groups or just user groups or just super, just whatever we want to call it, but just like based groups in different regions. And I think like Magento or a lot of other different types of different communities where they have, they host like their own meetups and stuff like that. And even if it's super casual, but then we can be involved like on our side. Okay. Like we can help organize it or whatever, but then yeah, like y'all totally own it. Like y'all are there. Let us know how we can help. Notion does this. I really love that productivity tool and they they have a really excellent community, But, but yeah, I definitely see that. I'm not sure how realistic that is for like this coming year since we're like, we're just now being able to like host all these really cool events, but Hey, if it happens, like, I am all for it. And I, yes, I'm like for making it happen too. So whatever I can do to help with that. And if we have a lot of interest and a lot of engaged people in different regions, like I am definitely for helping getting that started. I know in the agency (laughs) space, it, big commerce is growing so fast that it's been difficult to sometimes find developers. And so you have to train developers. Is there a easy way for an agency head to say, get, to to hire somebody that's been involved in another SaaS platform and convert them or help them understand just getting up and running on big commerce. Yeah. So we have like big dev boot camps. That's one of our, excuse me, that's one of our products or one of our services for getting started. It's like an onboarding type thing. So if you are a developer or if you have a developer that is like new to building on big commerce and you really want to set them up for success, big dev boot camp is a great option. Excuse me. Yeah. So you can get involved with big dev boot camp. I can actually get the link for you and I can include it so that you can try to like push that out with your recaps and all that. But basically it covers developing on stencil, on different types of getting started with like headless, all of our APIs, goodness, and just basic development, like getting started developing apps and themes, going over all of our resources, basically. So it's a really nice program to get involved with if you're new or if you're just like trying to take advantage of what other resources are available to you. And do you see developers quickly being onboarded and getting up to speed on big commerce? I guess you could say it really depends. So with big commerce, we have developers that are like third party developers, uh, as far as everyone is a third party developer, but we have freelancers. We also have like developers that work for our partner agencies. And so it really depends on the relationship, I would say, as far as the type of onboarding they get, which is something that we are working on as far as onboarding just developers in a better way in general, no matter, you know, who are we know what they're with. I would say our agencies are our partners. They have, I would say, more visibility to the Big Dev Bootcamp. So I'd say that is something that kind of sets that, like those developers aside, because if you are a partner, you have more visibility, you just know about it more. If you're a freelance developer, you probably have to discover it in a little bit of a different way, which is possible, but it's not as visible to you. So I would say 
As far as like resources like Big Dev Bootcamp, it is a little bit more accessible if you are a partner. But then everything else, as far as our documentation and our communities, like those are all very open for any sort of developer. So no matter if you are just doing freelance or you're working for an agency or one of our partners, then you have access to the community. And with that, you have the community team and then also DevRel to just walk you through whatever you would need. And I would imagine that the amount of big commerce developers is like an iceberg where there's the vast majority that aren't involved on the Slack channel. And it would be great to get them all involved. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So maybe a message out to all the agency heads to tell their developers that there's mm-hmm. this great place that you should join and, and get questions answered, right? I think that's the main key about the Slack channel is that if you do have questions, there's so many people in there that are so smart then that can help you get those questions answered quickly. I agree. And if you are a partner listening to this podcast or this interview, we are going to have our own spot on the partner newsletters, the agency and tech partner newsletters. So that's new and keep a lookout for us. We're hoping to keep coming monthly with new content and also always having that CTA where you can share with your development teams to have them join us in the developer community. We would love to have all of you. So as we finish things out today, if you have one like little nugget that you could give a developer who's starting right now, besides joining the Slack channel, what yeah. would you tell them? I would really tell them to take advantage of us. That would be me. That would be Katie. That would be Steven, our developer advocates. And it's not only through Slack. We are, you can meet us on Twitter. You can meet us at some events. You can meet us wherever LinkedIn, this podcast, if you are struggling and you're maybe posting on Stack Overflow or in the help center, reach out to us, like DM us because we want to get to know you and we want to get to know like how we can help not only just you, but also just every other developer that might be going through like a similar experience as you. And we really want to talk and connect and we do. And so if you're a developer and you're not super into that, totally understand. I would say something that could help, goodness, reaching out really does the best. Even if it's like on a GitHub repo or something, just letting someone know. That's really how we make our changes, even product. If you comment on GitHub or if you submit an issue or anything like that, or reach out to us in some way, or even tweet at us or whatever it is, reaching out does really help us make it better. So if you can find a way to reach out to us in some way, that is what I would recommend. Yeah. And there's also a big commerce Twitter community space now as well. So that's another good place for people to join. And there is more people in that space than in other platforms that I've Mm -hmm. noticed recently. So that's good. It's being used. Yes. would add that as a developer, and I'm going to admit that I started as a developer a long time ago, it is sometimes hard to ask questions and reach out and you really Mm -hmm. want to solve it yourself. But once you've, once you've haired up with, if you find somebody who can really help you, and I know when I got started, I found somebody could help me and And I think I was on MSN Messenger way back in the day, and man, did they help me. And there was so much more that I could get through with a little bit of guidance and mentorship Mm -hmm. that I think that the big, I know that the big commerce channels can offer you even better than Stack Overflow or something like that. That gets your questions, you ask questions, it'll get answered quickly. So I can't advocate more for using that and taking advantage of that as a developer. And it'll really launch your career as a developer and help you accelerate your learning and getting things done. And then I would also say play around in a sandbox environment and make some stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I second everything that you say. I agree 100%. I can't agree more, actually. Great. As we close out, Heather, today, I give everybody a chance to do a shameless plug. Okay. What would you like to plug today? Goodness, I've been prepping for this question. I'm not sure I'm having a hard time finding a shameless plug. I'm not going to lie. But I will say, if you could invest in a reusable water bottle. You can take it to the airport. You can take it everywhere. You can fill it up. I actually went to a place to eat not that long ago and I was like, Hey, can I just fill up my water bottle? And they're like, yeah, do it. Of course. So definitely get yourself a reusable water bottle or a few. That's my shameless plug. (laughs) Cool. Thank you so much. Heather Barr, the community development developer manager for big commerce. Thank you for being here today. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you again for listening. My name is Brent Peterson, and it has been a pleasure to be your host today. 
please sign up for our newsletter platforms at talk-commerce.com. Rate and subscribe to Talk Commerce wherever you download your podcasts. New shows out every week.